All right, guys, so our lesson today is on polynomials. So this is another um, word that you can say to your friends to make you sound super smart. You can say, today I worked with polynomials in Compacted. Um, pretty much polynomials are just expressions. Um, it's an expression that has two or more terms. So 5x plus 3y minus 7 would be a polynomial. 2x squared plus 6x plus 9 would be a polynomial. Um, and we've talked before about writing our expressions in standard form. And when you have more than one exponent that you're dealing with, you want those exponents to go in decreasing order from left to right. So your highest power would come first. Um, take a minute and copy those few blanks on your notes. Make sure you have those notes out and that you're following along the whole time you're watching this video. Um, so go ahead and be doing that. Copy those three blanks. You can pause until you are ready to move on with the writing polynomials. Okay, yeah, guys, so today's lesson is really pretty much a review of stuff we did more towards the beginning of Unit 2, which it's a good thing that this lesson comes at the end of Unit 2 so that we don't forget that stuff from the beginning because we've been doing exponent rules and scientific notation for so long now that we might have forgotten about just stuff that we did at the beginning like combining like terms and the distributed property. This lesson kind of goes back to those basic things that we learned at the beginning of Unit 2. So first, we're just writing each polynomial in standard form. So remember, our constants are last. Variables are going to come first. And we always want to keep the sign that's with each term. So this is a negative 2x. So when we rewrite this expression to where our variable term comes first, we're going to have negative 2x. And then that's a positive 7, so we're going to write plus 7. Okay, so that was number one. For number two, remember up here we wrote that exponents should go in decreasing order from left to right. So that means you start with your highest power. That means our n to the second power is going to have to come first. So we start off with one n to the second power. Variables always come before constants, so that negative 8n is going to have to come next. And then positive 14 will come last. So n squared minus 8n plus 14 would be our standard form of that polynomial. All right, number three, you want to start with your highest exponent. So this 10a squared has our highest power. It's going to come first, and it stays positive. Then our other variable, so that negative 2a, be careful, keep that negative sign with it, is going to be next. And then this is a positive 25, so we're going to write plus 25. Okay, guys, I want you to try number 4, 5, and 6, just writing those polynomials in standard form. So press pause on your video and fill those three problems in, and then hit play whenever you are ready to check your answers. All right, guys, on number four, we have to start with our highest power. So we're going to start out with 7w to the fourth. And then we would need our second power. So plus 8w to the second, because that's a positive 8w to the second. And then our last term, negative 2w, would come last. For number five, we're going to start with our highest power. So that's going to be this p to the third. So we're going to keep that negative sign with it. It's negative 4p to the third. Then we need our p of the second power. So negative 2p to the second. Then our p of the first power. So plus 1p because that was positive. And then at the end we're going to have our constant plus 1. And on number 6 we're going to start with our y to the third power. We need to make sure to keep our negative sign with it. So negative y to the third power. Then our y to the second power, so plus 4y to the second. Then negative 10y, and now negative 27. All right, so yeah, it's pretty much just rearranging them in order from greatest to least with our exponents, and then constants come last. So not too difficult. All right, our next section is on adding polynomials. So 
this is actually a review too because we are just combining like terms whenever we add polynomials. And then we just want to make sure to write the final answer in standard form, which is what we've been trying to do the whole time in Unit 2. So really nothing is new here. It's just going back to stuff we did at the beginning. So if we are combining like terms in number 7, our 7x can be combined with 4x. And they're both positive, so we would just add 7 plus 4 and get 11x. And then 15 can be combined with negative 9. We have to make sure to keep that sign with it, so it's a negative 9. 15 plus negative 9 would be 6, so plus 6. For number 8, this negative 3a can be combined with 2a and my positive 16 can be combined with my negative 27. So if we combine those variable terms, negative 3a plus 2a would be negative 1a and then 16 plus negative 27 would be negative 11. So we have negative a minus 11. Alright guys, um, I'm going to get you to pause, try numbers 9 and 10 on your own, and then hit play when you're ready to check those two. Okay, for number 9, we'd combine our variable terms. So negative 2k is going to get combined with positive 7k. And then for our constant terms, negative 4 gets combined with positive 23. So negative 2k plus 7k, I'm just doing my variables first because if I'm writing my answer in standard form, those variable terms are going to have to come first. So negative 2k plus 7k would give me positive 5k, and negative 4 plus 23 would give me positive 19. And number 10, my variable terms are going to get combined, so negative 15m will get combined with positive 8m. And for my constants, negative 37 gets combined with negative 1. So negative 15m plus positive 8m would give me negative 7m. And negative 37 plus negative 1 gives me negative 38. So that's what we should have gotten for numbers 9 and 10. Okay, 11 and all the way to 14, we have some exponents that we're dealing with, but it still works the same way. We just want to make sure to only combine the terms that have the same variable and the same exponent. So this 7c squared can only get combined with 6c squared because they both have c to the second power. And then 2c will get combined with negative 8c. So 7c squared plus 6c squared would give me 13c squared. And 2c plus negative 8c would give me negative 6c. Okay, for number 12, same thing. I can only combine this 3x with negative 3x. And then I can combine negative 8x squared with positive 2x squared. So since my standard form goes from descending order for the exponents, I'm going to start with my x to the second power terms. So negative 8x squared plus positive 2x squared would give me negative 6x squared. And 3x minus 3x would give me 0. So I'm just going to have negative 6x squared as my final answer. Okay, and 13, I'm just going to highlight things that can be combined. So my constant 8 can be combined with the constant negative 7. Negative 5x can be combined with negative 8x because they both have x to the first power. And 6x squared can be combined with 5x squared. So I'm going to start with my highest exponent, these x squared. 6x squared plus 5x squared will give me 11x squared. And negative 5x plus negative 8x will give me negative 13x. And then 8 plus negative 7 will give me positive 1.
All right, guys, pause your video and work number 14 just to make sure you've got this down pat. So work number 14 and then press play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so 14, we can combine our 5R squared with 3R squared, our 7R with 8R, and our negative 6 with negative 1. So then if we combine our r to the second power, because that's our highest exponent, 5R squared plus 3R squared would give us 8R squared, 7R plus 8R will give us 15R, and negative 6 plus negative 1 will give me negative 7. All right, so that is adding polynomials. Now we're going to go, oh, excuse me, we have two problems left. Go ahead and press pause. Try number 15 and 16, and then press play when you're ready to check those. I'll just be revealing the answers for those. Okay, so for 15, we should have gotten negative 4y squared plus 3y minus 8. And for 16, you should have gotten negative 11p squared minus 7p minus 14. So if you got those two answers, give yourself a pat on the back. If not, to go back and double check yourself, I bet you just made a mistake with a negative number. That's probably the most common mistakes that people make on these problems. Okay, now we're going to do subtracting polynomials, which, once again, it's really nothing new. We're just combining the distributed property with combining like terms. So, on these, we're just going to be combining like terms, but first, we have to distribute this negative sign. And remember, when you have a negative sign in front of the parentheses, there is an understood 1 right here that you're multiplying that parentheses by. So really, we're distributing a negative 1 to that parentheses. It's going to be negative 1 times 5x and negative 1 times 3. So first, I'm just going to bring down the first part of my problem. That's 7x plus 2. There's nothing to really do with it yet because we have to distribute before we can combine like terms. So then we're going to distribute negative 1 times 5x gives me negative 5x. And negative 1 times 3 gives me negative 3. So now my expression, or my polynomial, is 7x plus 2 minus 5x minus 3, and I'm going to combine my like terms. So if I combine 7x with negative 5x, and I'm also going to be combining 2 with negative 3. 7x plus negative 5x gives me 2x, and 2 plus negative 3 gives me negative 1. So 2x minus 1 would be my simplest form. Okay, same thing on number 18, y'all. We are going to write in this negative 1 that we're distributing, and we want to distribute first before we combine like terms. So bring down everything in that first parentheses. There's nothing to do with it yet. Distribute that negative 1 times 11x gives us negative 11x, and negative 1 times negative 6 gives me positive 6. Be careful with that negative sign. And then combine your like terms. If I combine 3x with negative 11x, that's going to give me negative 8x. And then I need to combine negative 11 with positive 6, so that gives me negative 5. So negative 8x minus 5. Okay, I want you all to pause work number 19 and number 20. And then hit play when you're ready to check those solutions. Okay, 19, we're going to be distributing a negative 1 first. So bring down your first parentheses, 8 minus 4m, and then negative 1 times 4m would be negative 4m. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. And combine your like terms. If I combine negative 4m with negative 4m, I get negative 8m. So be careful. A lot of people want to have 0 there because they just think 4m minus 4m, but it's a negative 4m plus negative 4m, so that's negative 8m. 
And then we're going to combine our constants. 8 plus negative 6 would give me positive 2, so plus 2. Okay, it's 20. Distributing that negative sign. So bring down your first parentheses, 1 minus 7p. Negative 1 times 18 gives me negative 18. And negative 1 times negative 7p gives me positive 7p. Now this time, when I combine these variable terms, I have negative 7p plus positive 7p. So this time I do get 0 for my variable term. Negative 7 plus positive 7 gives me 0. So I'm not going to have that p variable anymore. I'm just going to combine these constants, 1 plus negative 18, and that gives me negative 17 as my final answer. Alright, 21, we've got some exponents, but other than that, nothing's really different. We're still going to distribute that negative 1 first. 8w squared minus 7w is going to stay the same, and I think they just skipped a step on this. They just went on to combining it. So, you can still bring down that first parentheses, 8, oh goodness. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible. I'm writing with my mouse on my computer board. Okay, negative 1 times 3w would give me negative 3w. And negative 1 times negative 2w squared will give me positive 2w squared. Alright, and then combine like terms. 8w squared plus 2w squared gives me 10w squared. And negative 7w plus negative 3w would give me negative 10w. Alright, go ahead, hit pause, try this last one, number 22, on your own. We'll check it, and that'll be the end of the lesson. Hopefully this has been an easy lesson for you. Alright guys, so for 22, here we have positive 2r squared, and if we distribute that negative, this is going to become negative 6r squared. So 2r squared plus negative 6r squared should have given us negative 4r, and I kept saying squared, but it's cubed, excuse me. So negative 4r cubed, and then this is a positive 8. If we distribute that negative, this is going to be negative 1. So 8 plus negative 1 gives me 7. So 22 should have been negative 4r cubed plus 7. All right, guys, and that's the end of the note. Never mind. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> go ahead, hit pause, try these last four problems, and then we'll be done with the notes. So sorry. Okay, guys, for 23... So make sure if you have hit play that you're ready to check all four of these because I'm just going to be revealing them quickly. For 23, when we distribute, we should have gotten negative 5x squared. So 7x squared minus 5x squared will give us 2x squared. Negative 6x plus this would become a negative 3x would give us negative 9x. And positive 5 and then this would become a positive 17 when we distribute. So 5 plus 17 gives me 22. On 24, positive v squared, and then this would become a negative 4v squared. So that's going to give me negative 3v squared. And then I need to combine my v's to the first power, so 3v. And this would become a negative 2v when we distribute. So 3v plus negative 2v should give me positive 1v. And then negative 4, and this would become a negative 8, would give me negative 12. On 25, I have positive 3a squared, and then when I distribute, this would become a negative 5a squared. So that's negative 2a squared. I have a negative 3a. This would become a negative 5a, so that gives me negative 8a. And then negative 4, and this would become a positive 7. So negative 4 plus 7 gives me 3. Okay, and then on 26, we want to take care of our y to the second power first. So this is negative 3y squared. When I distribute this negative sign, this would become a positive 
4y squared. So negative 3y squared plus 4y squared would give me 1y squared. This is a negative 6y. When I distribute, this is going to become a negative 5y. So if I combine those, that should have given me negative 11y. And then if I combine negative 5, and then if I distribute, this would become a positive 2. Negative 5 plus 2 gives me negative 3. Alright guys, so now that was the end of our subtracting. So this one, you've got this section you've got a mixture of adding and subtracting. I want you to hit pause on your video and try these sets of problems. Alright, 27, if we combine negative 4k with k, we would get negative 3k. 2 plus 39 gives us 41. For 28, 5m, and then if we distribute this negative sign, that second parenthesis is going to become 8m plus m. I mean, negative 8 plus m. So 5m plus m gives me 6m, and negative 8 plus negative 8 gives me negative 16. 29, we would need to distribute this negative sign. So now our polynomial is negative 1 plus 13p squared minus 3p squared minus 14. Combine our p to the second power. So negative 13 plus negative 3, I mean, excuse me, positive 13 plus negative 3 would give me a positive 10p to the second power. And negative 1 plus negative 14 gives me negative 15. For 30, we need to combine our v to the second powers, and this time we're adding, so we don't have to distribute anything because we would just be distributing a positive 1, so this parentheses would stay the same anyway. So 8v squared plus negative 11v squared would give me negative 3v squared, and then 2v plus negative 2v would give me 0, so that just stays negative 3v to the second power. Alright, 31, we would be distributing our negative sign on this one. So 5x squared, and then this would become a negative 3x squared. So that would give us 2x squared. 14x, and this would become a negative 5x after we distribute. So that gives me 9x. And then negative 15, this would become a negative 7. So negative 15 plus negative 7 gives me negative 22. All right, 32, um, we're just adding, so there's no negative sign to distribute, but I do want to start out with my n to the second power terms since they have to come first in standard form. So if I combine negative 5n squared with positive 4n squared, that gives me negative n squared. And then I'll go to my n's. Positive n combined with negative 4n is going to give me negative 3n. And 1 plus 6 gives me 7. All right, same thing on 33. I'm not distributing a negative, so I'm going to start out by combining my a to the second power. 6a to the second power plus 3a to the second power is 9a to the second power. Then I'm going to do my a's. Negative 4a plus 3a is negative 1a. And then my constants. Negative 5 plus 7 is positive 2. And then 34, I would be distributing this negative sign, so all of my signs in the second parentheses are going to change. So I'm going to start out with my negative 3 c to the second power. I'm going to combine it with positive 8c to the second power because I would distribute this negative so it would become positive 8c to the second power. So negative 3 plus 8 gives me positive 5c to the second power. Then I'm going to do my C's, so this is an 8C, and this would become negative 5C, so 8 plus negative 5 gives me 3C. And then 2, this would become a negative 1, so 2 plus negative 1 gives me positive 1. Okay, and then that finishes up our 
adding and subtracting polynomials. Hopefully that was all pretty much review for you and that it kind of brought back some memories from the beginning of Unit 2 just to kind of refresh our brains on that stuff before we get into our Unit 2 tests. So the next couple days are just going to be pretty much a review as we get ready for our Unit 2 test, which will be on the 20th, which I believe is next Tuesday. So we've still got a little less than a week before our test, but we're starting to kind of get ready for it. So hopefully this was a good review lesson for that. Speaking of review, your next activity is a little um, CSI mystery. And it says do not write on my cards, but we're going to ignore that because y'all are not doing them on cards this year. You are going to do the whole mystery on the computer. So in Canvas, there is a Google Form link on today's agenda underneath the link that you clicked to do this video assignment. So you're going to go back to today's agenda and click on that link for the Google Form. And it's going to talk you through the whole story of the mystery and give you directions for solving each clue. So your assignment for the rest of class is just to work on as much of this CSI mystery on your Google Form as you can get solved. So you'll probably need your calculator and you'll need a sheet of scratch paper um, to be able to work through this mystery. And hopefully you all have a lot of fun kind of working through that. Um, I am leaving notes for the sub that if you need to ask people around you questions about the mystery, you can do that. Just make sure you keep it to a whisper. Um, work independently, but if you need to ask someone around you for help, you can do that quickly with a whisper. Um, so go back to today's agenda in Canvas and click the link out beside your number two step of the day that will take you to a Google form and it'll kind of walk you through this mystery activity. If for some reason you finish the mystery, you can be working on your new Math Excel assignment that you just got yesterday. Alright, hope you all have a good day. Be extra good for the sub.